We want to talk about the COVID spread in the state of Colorado and also some of the hardship that, that the state is facing. While they do wait for more stimulus, our very own Rick Newman sat down with Jared Polis. He's the governor of Colorado earlier this afternoon. Rick, what did he have to say just about, I guess, how the state is faring right now in the midst of the pandemic and then while it also waits for that extra stimulus? One of the things we've talked about over and over here is this refrain among Democrats inside the Beltway in Washington that there has to be additional uh, aid for states and cities in a stimulus bill. And it looks like they're going to pass a bill now that does not have additional uh, state and local aid. So I asked uh, Governor Jared Polis of Colorado, I thought he would say, yeah, I can't believe they're dropping the ball on this. Instead, he actually sounded pretty grateful to be getting whatever Congress is likely to pass. So let's listen to what he had to say about that. Well, look, we've seen the outline, and uh, I agree with uh, the president-elect Biden, who said this is really a down payment that can always do more later. But I think this is a great idea. It funds the vaccine delivery, funds the testing. That's critical for the states. I mean, otherwise, people need to realize the testing funding goes away in December. There's no money for vaccine distribution. And also, I, I think they're talking about including a direct payment to people, five, six, seven hundred dollars That would be absolutely terrific, really injecting that money into the economy, especially for those who need it and aid for businesses, which you also need in Colorado, right? Absolutely, we're thrilled. We had our own, we did our own state stimulus. Uh, we had a special session of our legislature, bipartisan tax uh, uh, breaks for restaurants, allowing them to keep the sales tax they collect rather than send it to the state, uh, direct aid for businesses that are capacity limited and help for childcare. But no one can, no state can do something the size and scope of the federal government. So to step up with another PPP type program is just gonna be such a blessing to help American businesses position themselves well for the recovery and avoid further layoffs. So let's say this bill gets passed. It's around maybe $900 billion. Um, th this part has been left out, which is direct aid to states and, ci and cities. Do you need that in addition? Well, I think I'm a big fan of local administration. I think it's cities, counties, states know what's going on in the ground. And the closer you bring that level of government to the people, I think the more effective any kind of stimulus can be. But look, um, you don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Uh, and I think this is, uh, you know, a, a good a good package. There is indirect aid to help state priorities. There's help for school districts, as an example, that goes right out to the schools. They're largely funded by states. That helps states' budgets indirectly. And then there's direct funding for testing and vaccine distribution. It's important people realize how expensive that these are and that states are not in a position to take that on in addition to what they do without federal help. And so I think funding the health response has got to be a priority. Frankly, I'm glad to see Republicans and Democrats get together on anything. Uh, and it looks like a, a good package for the country. People who follow the dueling press conferences inside the Beltway in Washington uh, I mean, get the sense that Democrats are outraged that Republicans won't include more state and local aid. You don't you don't seem to feel that way. You seem, seem to feel like this is a, a, a welcome legislative development. Well, of course, uh, it would be great to have more locally administered aid. But uh, whether the state sends it out, we sent out a three hundred and seventy five dollar one time payment to folks who'd experience unemployment, a few hundred thousand Coloradans. Uh, but we don't have the capability as a state to send out $600 to everybody in our state. No state does. That needs to come federally. So we we welcome it. I think help for state and local would be great. Uh, it looks like in this package, there's some indirect help for school districts, for funding the health response. There's always the opportunity to do more later. But there is a fierce urgency about getting something done here concurrent with the omnibus is quite literally states run out of funding for vaccine distribution and testing to critical health responses in the next couple of weeks. So vaccine distribution is just getting started. Uh, you've had a rollout in your state. What are your expectations in, in terms of how much vaccine you're going to get, how quickly you'll be able to get people vaccinated and the funding stream that you need, as you've been mentioning? In this first week, Colorado got about 40 6,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine. That's our based on our pro rata share of the population. We're going to get over 90,000 Moderna vaccines, hopefully as soon as Saturday, Sunday, Monday, as soon as it gets the FDA approval and they can move it out. Uh, we don't have a lot of visibility into weeks four, five, and six, but we're hoping that that supply only increases. Uh, we then get it out, deploy it, use it right away. Uh, we're, we're holding folks accountable to, accountable to make sure anybody in Colorado that is his distribution partner uses everything they receive within 72 hours. We want that in people's arms, protecting people as soon as possible. 
So basically, you'll just take all you can get and you'll get it to people as quick as, quickly as you can. You don't see kinks in the distribution system. That's the long and the short of it. Uh, of course, we optimize, meaning we want to save lives, protect the most vulnerable people over 65 uh, before the general population. But the sooner we can get it out, end the pandemic, return to normalcy, save lives, the better. How are your cities doing in, st in terms of uh, the revenue they need to keep cops on the payroll, firefighters, teachers? I mean, there's been some concern that there are going to have to be layoffs at this level because cities and North in states cannot run budget deficits the way Washington can, so they need to balance those budgets. Are you going to have trouble there with those payrolls? And that's one of the strong arguments for the state and local aid. Uh, states like Colorado can't borrow, can't deficit spend. Uh, this is the time for a stimulus uh, that helps uh, support our police, support our teachers and others. It looks like there is support for educators in there, but yes, uh, depending on the city in Colorado, uh, just like across the country, many of them have decreased uh, a sales tax revenue, uh, one of their major sources of revenue. And it's a very tough decision if there's not uh, another federal round of assistance about what to cut. So, Sean, I think the main takeaway there is uh, if Congress does pass this bill around $900 billion, even if it does not have that direct aid for states and cities, here's one Democratic governor in Colorado saying this is going to help us a lot. It's going to get money to businesses, perhaps to individuals, laid off people, and indirectly perhaps to school districts. So it will be welcome. And yeah, states need all the help that they can get at this point. You can catch Rick's full interview on yahoofinance.com. Rick, thanks so much for bringing that to us. See you, Shauna.